Hey everybody, it's Shelby here at Shuffles Tap and Musical Theater School at Studio Maestro. And it's been a while since I have had a step to teach you, but actually I just, for the first time in my life, got good at this particular step. And I wanted to credit it to Jean Medler. Um, I was teaching at the Big Apple Tap Festival and I had just one little hour and a half slot that I could jump into someone else's class and I had never taken from Jean before and so I jumped into his class because I really wanted to hear what he had to say and um, I had heard so much about him and he had a different approach than I had ever learned to learning a flip. There's other names for this but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna call it a flip. And I have always been able to do a flip, but I have never been able to do multiple flips in a row, and it was because of the approach that I was taking to do the step. And his was different, and so I would like to first credit Jean for the reason that I am now much better and more consistent at this step, and um, talk to you about a couple of the different approaches I've learned to getting this step, and hopefully if you guys work on it, you can um, start to get consistent with it too if you are not. So let's get started on learning a flip now. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about a flip is that all three of your sounds come from your toe tap. None of the sounds come from your heel tap. So without getting too specific, you're basically making a sound on the side of your toe, then on the middle of your toe, then on the inner part of your toe. But it's not really that easy to break it down in that way what you're actually gonna do. And I'm gonna first teach you the way that I learned this originally because it did help me understand the mechanics of it in the first place. And I was taught um, to relax my leg entirely. And if you don't relax your ankle, there is not any chance that you are going to get this done. You have to let your ankle hang. And what I was taught to do was start with my hip in and flip it out and let my foot hang in the air and ricochet in the air. And then I was taught to pull that down a little closer to the ground and see if I could let the ricocheting of my foot from flipping my hip out make three sounds. And that was the way I initially learned to do this. Now this is the kind of step you have to do over and over and over again to start to get good at it. So I was able to get one using that approach. So what I would do is I would just shake my hip out and literally let my leg ricochet and then I would move it closer to the ground and try to make three sounds that way. Um, I would do the same exact thing on the left leg. So I would shake it up, shake it up, make three sounds shifting your hip this way. Now, that approach was able to get me one solid flip. That being said, I wasn't particularly consistent about it. And in addition to that, I never understood how people did multiple flips in a row because my hip was out and I didn't understand how to tuck it back under me to get a second one without pausing. Enter Gene Medler's approach. And what he had said, which I thought was really informative and interesting, was to think of it as a pendulum moving from side to side. And in addition to that, think of it down to up action. And what that really changed for me is realizing that I could actually get this step using the muscles next to my knee, and I didn't have to approach it from the hip. And because of that, I am now able to do um, usually eight in a row pretty consistently on both feet, which is nowhere near what I was capable of doing even like a month ago today. So with that pendulum idea, from here, in addition to dropping my leg low enough that it hits the ground, I am now able to get multiple flips without using my hip and pulling it in and out of its socket. Speaking of crediting Jean Medler for this approach, I'm also going to credit Brenda Buffalino, who is someone that I've worked with that I love so much that I think is so brilliant as well. And she said something once in a class that I just thought was so smart that I find myself saying it all the time, which is that the difference between getting and not getting a step is usually two inches. What she means is that if I'm not getting a step here, maybe if I try it here, I might get it. Maybe if I try it a little in front, a little further in. Whatever it is, it's not something that is the same for every person. Each person's body is different, and so for me, I'm still working on figuring out where exactly to place myself so that this is the most consistent. Um, but again, I have to let my ankle completely relax and it's just a matter of doing it over and over, and I've already come a long way, even in this last month, at getting this step. So, like I said, 
I'm just getting good at it. So some of you might have really loose ankles and love this kind of thing, but this is not the sort of thing that is easy for me at all. I have very tight ankles. And so I'm really excited that I can do this now and I wanted to share what I have learned with you, my subscribers. So hopefully this video helps you and you can start working on your flips. So that was my video on how to do a flip in tap dance. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, let me know if you want more videos like this or if there's another step you have been wanting to work on. Because um, after 30 years of tap dancing, I just finally got good at this. So I wanted to share um, what I had learned with you today. So I'll see you in our next video and thanks so much for watching. Bye.